April 8, 1997, the tour of Lafcadio Hearn exhibit visited a cherry blossom city, Washington, D.C. JICC, the Japan Information and Culture Center, Embassy of Japan at 20th Street, was selected for the exhibit site that ran one month in D.C. The tour of the exhibit started at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia in October of 1996. It went to Christopher Newport University in January of 1997 and Virginia Randolph-Macon College in March. Lafcadio Hearn, author and educator, was known for his writings, which provide an exotic, romantic view of Japanese people, customs, and folklore. He became a Japanese citizen under the name Kawazumi Yakumo. Hearn's writings were widely read and influential in shaping Western views on Japan from the late 19th century. The exhibit is scheduled to tour the annual convention in Atlanta at the National Association of Japan America Societies of America and is planned to visit some cities in Japan next July through August. Lafcadio Hearn, Japanese name Kawazumi Yakumo, was born June 27, 1850, on the Ionian island of Lucadia off the coast of Greece. His father was an Irish surgeon in the British Army, and his mother was Greek. His parents were divorced when he was seven before giving birth to his brother, Daniel James Hearn. They only met once as children, but it was not remembered by Lafcadio. Hearn lived with his great aunt, Mrs. Bernane, in Dublin. She provided Hearn with a good education in France and England and sent Hearn to the United States at the age of 19. After a hard time in New York, he began his career as a newspaper reporter in Cincinnati in 1872. He acquired a local reputation for his vivid writing and predilection for the macabre. Hearn set off for New Orleans as a correspondent and began his literary career writing about unique Creole culture as well as other customs and scenes of New Orleans. He encountered Japan for the first time at the World Exposition of 1884 while reporting on the Japanese pavilion. He was fascinated by the Japanese culture. In 1890, Harper's Magazine sent Hearn as a correspondent to Japan. While teaching English and literature at two schools in Matsui, Hearn wrote about Japan and sent the articles to the Harper's Magazine and the Atlantic Monthly. After quitting Harper's Magazine, he stayed in Japan and married a Japanese woman, Setsu Kawazumi. He became a Japanese citizen and had a happy family with three boys and one daughter. Later, he moved to Tokyo and taught English literature at the Imperial University. In his initial enthusiasm for Japan and the Japanese, Hearn took on a Japanese lifestyle and began to study Japanese culture and folklore with the help of his wife and his students. Hearn kept writing on Japan, interpreting ancient culture to the world while teaching English and literature until his death in 1904. The first day of the Washington, D.C. exhibition, an opening ceremony was held at the auditorium of JICC with many invited guests. Welcome to the Japan Information Culture Center, Embassy of Japan. Tonight, we are very, very pleased to host the opening reception and the kickoff for the one-month exhibition of the works of Lafcadio Han or Koizumi Yagumo. We are very pleased to work together with New South Japanese Magazine, Tulane University, and the Japan American Society to bring this exhibit to Washington during the Cherry Blossom Festival. Tonight, the Kazumi and the Hearn families of the United States are having a reunion. And I'd like them all to stand up for you. There are too many to name. Bon Kazumi came from Japan, and the Hearn family members. I'd like to give one eight Bone, would you come up and accept that for the Kazumi family in Japan? Three great grandsons of Lafcadio and Daniel James and other relatives and met for the first time tonight, 90 years after Hearn's death. We meet tonight to
to honor a giant literary talent who stood only five foot three inches in his stocking feet. Once you had met Hearn, you would not forget him. He possessed an almost feminine grace in his movements. His hands were delicate and supple, and he employed them with quick, understated motions. Until he was settled in Japan, his whole wardrobe was peculiar. He wore the most clumsy and neglected shoes. His favorite coat, both in winter and summer, was a heavy double-breasted pea jacket. His wide-brimmed, sombrero-like hat was a standing joke among his friends, and even he laughed about it. Most of his clothes were purchased for the sake of economy and how long they would last rather than for fashion. His linen was always fresh and clean. His cleanliness, generally speaking, was notable. For example, when he, he lived in New Orleans, he lived in many different uh, boarding houses there, and he drove the landladies crazy in New Orleans because he wanted water every day for his bath, and they had to bring it from downstairs up into his bath. And they kept telling him that a daily bath was not good for his health, <laughs> but he, he would have none of that. And when he moved to Japan, he fell in love with the bathing practices in Japan because of the J Japanese being so interested in bathing and also the Japanese furo, he became very, very fond of that. His voice was softly musical with a faint Irish touch to it, and he spoke in short sentences and the manner of his speech was very restrained. He was blind in his left eye, which had been damaged while he was at St. Cuthbert's School in England. The retina had been destroyed and the eye became pearly white and bulbous with scar tissue. His right eye was enormously nearsighted from birth, and because of the strain he placed on this eye through constant reading and writing, it too became protuberant. At first meeting, many were turned off by this disfigurement centered on his eyes. He frequently placed his hand over the injured eye to hide it from the person with whom he was talking. His turbulent childhood and this facial disfigurement compelled him to have a different personality than he would have had otherwise. And this evening, we'll spend a good bit of time looking at Hearn's personality. Perhaps his most significant traits were his sensitivity, his unconventional nature, his restlessness, his curiosity, and his several obsessions. <laughs> So when Charlie Nelson called me about this event, I got on the phone right away and said, I got to get some of the other cousins here. And tonight, to be able to share, have them meet Bond for the first time and be part of this event is, is just overwhelming. It's like a journey. It's the best way I can it. It's like an odyssey or a journey. I, you know, what will be the next adventure? You know, someday I hope to get over to Japan and meet the rest of the family, but it's been, it's been wonderful. It was like looking in an eastern mirror, I tell you, because looking at Bonko Asumi for the first time, and his, his eastern images just really welled up in me. Uh, I could feel the uh, Lafcadio's heart. Actually, I could feel Rosa's heart, Rosa Casamani, our Greek common ancestor. And of course, the, uh, the deep uh, conviction that there's something good out there, regardless of how awful it is. I think he's very misunderstood, very misunderstood person. And once you start reading his letters and, and reading his works, you, you come to understand him as uh, a man who just liked to be left alone. You, <laughs> he was a very quiet, personal type person who did not mix well with, with a lo large group of people. If you became a friend of his, he, would be, he was uh, a dear friend of yours and would stay friends with you. Nine relatives from Japan and the United States met close together and celebrated the reunion, enriching the friendship between blood relatives. In the late 19th century, while many American missionaries and teachers were bringing Western culture to Japan, 
for its civilization and enlightenment, Herm was the only one who introduced the value and charm of Japan to the Western world. The reunion of Hearn's family for the first time in 90 years may bear a new fruit of amity between America and Japan, like cherry trees at the Tidal Basin in D.C.